Angular 20 was just released, and if you are an Angular developer, you for sure must follow newest features to be on the cutting edge. This is why by the end of this video you will learn all new features of Angular 20 and how you can improve your code with them. So here I opened an official blog of Angular 20 and let's check what all changes are about. Most importantly, this release is focused on stability and less on new features. So first of all, let's start from the highlights. We had a lot of APIs, especially regarding signals, which was in development preview, like for example, effect, linked signal, and to signal. Now all this stuff is stable. It is not in dev preview anymore, which means we can safely use it in our applications. Most likely you already used just a normal signal, which already gives us a lot, but additionally now we can safely use effect if we need to do some side effect when our signal changed, linked signal if we want to change our signal only on the client and then allow it to be updated later, and to signal which is useful when you want to convert for example a RxJS stream to a signal. And signal solution is extremely powerful. This is exactly why in my middle to senior front-end bootcamp, I use it in all projects that we're implementing with Angular. Additionally to that, things like incremental hydration, which we need for server-side rendering, is also stable and zoneless is in dev preview. What does zoneless mean inside Angular 19? Zone.js was removed from Angular and now we don't have this dependency anymore. And it is a good idea to think how you can convert your existing project to zoneless because this is the future of Angular. And you can see that because zoneless now is in dev preview and the next step would be to make it stable. And additional to that we are getting better Angular dev tools, better experience with type checking, language support and so on. And I think it is important to mention here that they are using Angular signals inside YouTube and it improved significantly input latency. And additionally to that, we have an RFC to implement signals natively inside JavaScript, and part of the push why it is happening is because of Angular signals. Now let's talk about experimental API. There are no huge changes here. Inside Angular 19, we got as experimental resource API and HTTP resource, they are staying the same. So you can define a resource which will be triggered when your signal changes. And as you can see inside Loader here, we are working with promises, not observables. What it allows us to do is declaratively define our code. And then we can just render signals from user resource inside our markup. Exactly the same we can do, for example, with WebSockets. We are again using here resource and inside on message we are updating signal. It will work exactly the same. And if you don't want to use promises, but you want to use HTTP client because you are used to it, then you can use HTTP resource. It is working in exactly the same way, it is binded to signals, but inside we are leveraging HTTP GET and obviously all interceptors which are coming with HTTP client. As I already mentioned, zoneless now is in development preview, so you can use it just by throwing provide zoneless change detection to your application. And additionally here we are getting provide browser global error listeners, which will help us to gauge errors which previously were difficult to see inside Angular. Additionally, inside Angular 20, incremental hydration that is being used in server-side application is considered stable. And if you don't know what is incremental hydration, it allows you to render parts of your markup on the server with usage of defer and trigger and parts on the client. It makes your applications much faster and your markup smaller. So in order to start using it, you can just throw provide client hydration with incremental hydration inside your providers. Another really interesting point is that Angular team collaborated with Chrome DevTools in order to make support of Angular better inside DevTools itself. So as you can see here, when you are measuring performance, you can directly see what components are being executed without need to install additional extensions. Another cool feature is the possibility to dynamically create Angular components. 
It was possible before when you need to create like models or tooltips for example in the body, but it was tedious and the code was quite complex. Now we have another way which is extremely simplistic. We can use a function like create component, we throw inside a dialog like for example a model and we provide inside bindings and directives and it dynamically creates this component. Additionally to that we are getting more syntax which is similar to JavaScript inside HTML files of Angular. Like for example you can write n on power2 or check if specific object has this property. Another change which is really big one but from my perspective is kind of useless is a new style guide. So inside Angular the typical naming convention that we had is the name like foo then dot component dot ts or dot directive dot ts or dot service dot ts. It was really easy to follow and this is what we used inside Angular always. Now they are changing that and all this post fixing is not needed. So your component would be foo dot ts and nothing else. This now will be the default behavior which is recommended, but you still can use the older version because all projects that were created previously are still using this notation. So inside the Angular JSON you can simply define your schematics and provide the extension that you want. Additionally to that in Angular DevTools we have a possibility to see incremental hydration and deferred views. This is amazing for debugging purposes because it simplifies it a lot. Another really good news that we have is that they are trying to leverage vTest instead of Karma for testing. And if you watched my videos previously, I am a huge fan of vTest as I am using vid as a build tool. So having vTest inside Angular is amazing because it is a really powerful solution to run your tests. Also we have some deprecations and this is ng4, ngif and ngswitch. I hope that you are not using them in your projects and you switched to control flow, but if you did not, it's a really great time to switch to it because this older notation is already deprecated. And you can try to migrate your project just with a single command and you generate Angular Core control flow, but obviously if your project is super complicated then it won't work and you should do it by hand. So as you can see Angular 20 has quite a lot of significant changes. And if you are a middle developer who want to become a senior and want to improve your skills, especially Angular, I have a full front-end bootcamp which will help you to transform yourself to a senior developer. So check the link in the description under the video.